John Brunsden was born in Cheltenham in 1933 and has since become one of Britain's respected printmakers. His work is to be found in national collections, including the Tate Gallery, the Victoria and Albert Museum, the Arts Council of Great Britain and the Museum of Modern Art, New York. I became a printmaker more by accident than design because I was at Cheltenham College of Art and in those days, one uh, did two years foundation, then followed immediately by two years NDD. After the two years foundation, one had to choose between whether you want to do graphic design, sculptor or painter. And uh, because I didn't get on too well with a painting tutor, I chose to do graphic design. But in the graphic design department, stood an etching press and a litho press and I, I, I immediately sort of fell for it and that's what started it off more by accident than anything else. At Cheltenham there was this, uh, this thing where everybody, they encouraged you to try for the Royal College of Art and uh, I was regarded as somewhat of a good prospect, so I sent out work to uh, to get into the Royal College of Art and got in for the interview. And uh, there you had to do paintings and very drawings and things for the um, for the entrance. And had an interview with Professor Austin. It, it was whilst at the Royal College that uh, I'd gone to see an, an exhibition of uh, American Abstract Expressionists, which was very new then. And I immediately really uh, fell for it. I, I just like the dynamicness of it all and uh, the boldness in, in the gestures it, it, uh, and the colour. Although my favourite uh, artist then was, was Klein, who actually just worked in black and white, which as I suppose I was also still working in black and white, uh, sort of um, was a natural uh, uh, inclination to follow. But I like Rothko and Motherwell and all of those. The, 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 the gestures and things were very exciting. Although Stanley Dent, the principal of Cheltenham College of Art, gave John Brunsden initial support, it was, however, Julian Trevelyan, head of printmaking at the Royal College, who, more than anyone else, provided a vigorous and fundamental influence on his working method. Trevelyan was uh, was very good, really, because uh, he introduced it the Royal College colour printing because he had gone to uh, Stanley Hayter over in France and had uh, learned about coloured printmaking over there. And, and came, when he came back, uh, the Royal College printmaking department, which up to then had been solely black and white, suddenly burst out into colour, which was very new then, very new. At the Royal College, we, we also had Alistair Grant, who, who was a young man then, uh, though, of course, he, he seemed old to us, but his, his liveliness and uh, energy involved in making plates which, uh, and everything was, was quite inspirational. Edwin Liddell was in the lithography department who um, encouraged us to, to work more in colour. And we used to have Edward Ardizone, who it was a bumbling Pickwickian sort of character who used to come in with snuff all down his jumper and we all thought he put on a new jumper when uh, all he'd done was turn the jumper around the other way. Uh, and he was very good for drawing. We, we enjoyed his classes. And he used to wander into the painting school at times as well with Ruskin Spear and people like that would come and uh, give us chats and uh, discuss our work. Whilst I was at the college, I, a friend of mine, uh, John Sturgis, and I decided we just didn't want to teach. And we uh, had a chat with Julian Trevelyan, who said, would we be interested in going to a place called Digswell Art Centre in Welling Garden City and setting up uh, an etching studio there and earn our money by printing up uh, other artists' editions? So we said yes. And we had the interviews with the Digsville Art Trust and got in and they furnished us with money to buy a, a, a press and uh, the wood to build up all the studio equipment. Um, unfortunately, 
one had no money whilst one was doing this, and I landed up uh, also working in the local department store. I remember selling fireworks and then became the cowboy on the Christmas attraction, um, all dolled up in silk shirt and high heel boots. Uh, and Trevelyan actually mentions this in his book in Indigo Days, uh, saying that even though you may have gone through the Royal College of Art and got your ARCA, you still may up, end up as the cowboy in the Christmas attraction. I am very proud of that sentence. I couldn't have asked for a better place to go. It, it was an isolated Regency Mansion house, and there you learnt to work because you had more mature artists such as uh, Hans Koper, the potter, uh, Keith New, stained glass uh, artist who'd done windows for the Coventry Cathedral. Um, Tom Fairs, who'd done uh, windows for the Central School. Uh, Ralph Brown, sculptor. John Mills, sculptor. Peter Collingwood, the weaver. Michael Andrews was there, and I always remember him because he used to plug into the corridor lights, which were paid for by the Trust for his cooker. And if the trusts were coming around, he would dash out into the corridor, unplug and chuck a blanket over his cooker so that they wouldn't uh, see what he was doing. But it, it was really good because you wandered into other people's studios, see their paintings, and they came into you, and they came and did etchings, and uh, you went and did a bit of sculpture. Uh, and, and there was very good uh, community life. Um, but I did print up for uh, people like, like Julian Trevelyan, of course, who gave me his work, and George Chapman, and Andre Bacar, uh, Derek Greaves, uh, Geoffrey Clark, Gabriel White for the Arts Council, who used to give me his, and Francis Kelly. Uh, so, so I had a good variety and, uh, of, of ways of doing etchings uh, from which I learned. One of the things I learned was, 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 was to actually etch it into the plate. It was at that stage that, that I really began to open up. I think it was because of the influences around me. And uh, I, I, I became more gestural and much more bolder in, in my etchings and, and would um, put a ground on a plate and then use Turk's rag and, and very gestural movements on the plate. They were always about something, but um, people would have to ask as to what it was before they could recognise it. And I, I would viciously etch the plate, and people say, why don't you wear gloves? And uh, if you wear gloves, you, uh, even though they're very thin, you can't feel the plate, and I'm frightened that if I get it out, I should drop it, and then get splashed with nitric acid. Um, and then it's messy, and you clean off, and you, you don't know quite how the plate is etched until you've taken the first proof. At that, that time, uh, I, I would do a lot of studio interiors uh, and just outside. Uh, I used to like the, the etching press because I had a huge wheel. And although I never actually did the whole wheel because I always only used to be able to see half of it, so only half a wheel gesture came on the thing. And then there was the white sink and the windows, which you would allow you to use blue or something like this in it. In that period, there were a lot of interiors, chair backs, and table subjects. I even included uh, rather exaggerated telephones and electric light switches and plugs. <laughs> this I, I satisfied me for a long time, just doing the studio and just outside the windows. And then gradually I moved outside and moved into the landscape. When my time came up at Digswell, I'd heard that uh, you could get a house for rent um, in Woburn Village from the Duke of Bedford. So we had this, uh, this house in, in Woburn, which did have a hole in the, in the roof when we 
first went there. And I used the cellar as, uh, as my studio, which had no windows. So I, I went down into the bowels of the earth, but it was very quiet. I've always liked to see my pictures in one go. So I rather worked on it that I, I would add all my colors to the one scene and use just one single plate and print them all at the same time. So um, it was a rather laborious way of doing it because the, the printing is not of the easiest of butting up one color to another. Um, but I insist on doing it, uh, um, though occasionally I have used two plates. I rather like the, the contrast between the majestic qualities of the landscape and man's own influence on it and how he scratches a living on it. During 1961, John Brunsden was invited by Michael Chase to show in the New Editions exhibition at the Zwemer Gallery. Such was the impact of this show that his reputation was assured. His book, The Technique of Etching and Engraving, was published in 1964, and the next year he was asked by Michael Rothenstein to become a founder member of the Printmakers' Council. His work became increasingly figurative. He focused on Wales, so too the Lake District. In 1973, he became with Edward Borden, one of the first artists to join Christie's contemporary art. Visits to the Seychelles and Egypt followed. So too commissions from the Protection of Royal England, the National Trust, and a suite of 12 plates from James Sherwood for the Hotel Tripriani in Venice. Others included 19 plates for the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust. John Brunsden is now recording Britain's heritage, which incorporates evocative images such as the cathedrals of Ely, Canterbury, Norwich, Ripon, Hereford, and the enduring icon of Wells. Ruined abbeys and churches too are featured, as well as country houses. But it is the landscape which remains a constant theme. Moving to Suffolk was a bit of a jolt because I liked hills and mountains and uh, rolling landscapes and of course Suffolk is very, very flat. But I soon realised that skies and a different light down there was uh, more than compensated for being very flat in the landscape. And anyway, when I did go um, to Wales, it hit you once again.
when I start working, I, I tend to work using line only and design with line. And so with the landscape, it's the skeleton of the landscape that I design one shape against another shape, one rhythm against another rhythm. And uh, some people say my trees are a little bit of a, a, of a giveaway, Brunsden trademark. Um, they're, they're rather like the skeletons of trees where you use the trunk and uh, they, they can be autumn, they can be winter, they can be any time of the year. As regards to the future, I sometimes think it would be nice uh, not to have to earn a living. And I would love to have about two or three years where I'd forget anything about galleries. And I do feel I need to, to spread out, loosen up. How that would take form or shape, I'm not sure. But more abstract again, I think, but in a different way to what it was before. That's what I like, is the fact you don't know where it's going to go or what you're going to do. All I know is that I should just go on until I can't do it anymore physically. Hopefully I'll drop dead over the op plate. <laughs>